Okay. Um, this is kind of a, a we, I, I did this to kind of demonstrate little, all the little things that we talked about, most of the things that we talked about. Um, uh, first thing first, uh, I wanted uh, a debug thingy to be able to, so essentially this program runs like this. When I run it, um, it shows messages as uh, it goes through the execution. Okay, so creating this, copying this, it actually shows everything as it goes through. And I'm going to say over here, I don't know, Freddy, and then it shows exactly what's happening. And if I want to, I can uh, turn off the tracing so it's not going to show those messages. It's just going to run the program as is with no messages. Uh, okay, so that's one of the things that I'll... That, that was the first thing. So I created a defined statement. I called it trace. And if it was a namespace, I, I would have called it SDDS trace, but I didn't do it because I'm just writing an example here. Um, so, uh, and the parts that are actually printing the, the debugging messages over here are within a, a clause that says, if defined trace, compile this. Otherwise, don't compile it. So if I comment the trace over here, as you'll see, these are dimmed. Now I have an empty function that doesn't do anything. The function still gets called, but because it doesn't do anything, uh, it's not going to show anything. Okay? So I can turn the tracing on and off. That's a very useful thing to do. For debugging, I wanted to show different messages as I go through it. So I created my own C out class. And I call it trace. You see that? But this class, I don't want to recreate it. So it's an anonymous class, as you see. It doesn't have a name. And it only has one, one instance called trace. I overloaded the left shift operator over here with uh, a character string passed to it. And I printed it out and returned this. But because it's nameless, I don't know what is the type that I'm returning to be able to create a chain reaction, right? This, the structure doesn't have a name. How do I know what reference I'm supposed to return? That's auto for you. So now I'm saying auto reference because I'm returning this. It returns the reference of this type, whatever it is. I don't have a name for it. Who cares? I'm using auto here. All right? And to be able to print the class name that I have, I overloaded the insertion operator for the name too. And I said, print yourself. But name is defined after the class. So it has no idea what is name. Because of that, I have to have forward declaration, class name. So this class name tells to my debugging class, there is a, a class called name coming up. How do you suppose to print it? I put the prototype for the uh, operator overload that I have at the top. So it knows that's the operator overload. It knows there is a class. Therefore, I'm not going to have any problem with this message, even though, and I'm not instantiating the name. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just printing the n using C out, which is defined in this O stream. And I'm using the class itself as a class, and it's a reference, so I'm not instantiating it. So all is good. I have no problem in here. If I instantiated name, if I had something like this, then it wouldn't have worked, because it doesn't have access to the constructor yet. By having a forward declaration, I cannot say what is the constructor of name, so I could not do that. Only I'm allowed to have a reference. This yellow schmellow thingy, it's in OP244, I put it. You know what is that? It just prints colors. So it says if msc underline ver is not defined, it means it is not Windows. It is on Linux, so it's going to use this for color. Otherwise, it's going to use this for color. So essentially, I'm telling which one to compile based on platform. If I'm on Windows, it's going to compile the bottom one. When I put it on Matrix, it's going to compile the top one. OK? 
So it's actually, say, Microsoft C version. If it's, if it's not defined, it means I'm on Linux or Mac. All right? But that color thing, I just put it for you to see. It's not in the, the color is not on, the, on your notes. It's without color. I'll put this one too, and I'll call it colorful if you want to. I don't know if it's going to work on Matrix or not. I didn't test it. Um, I create a class name, and let me minimize everything first just to see what we have. I did everything in line, so uh, I can talk about it, and we go through it one by one. So um, I created, uh, my name is a, is, a, is simply a dynamic C string. It's a dynamic C string, therefore I need a, a, um, a, a character pointer variable to hold the data. And I want that thing to be null. In C++ 17, 11 and 17, I can initialize the value right over there. So I simply say when the object is getting created, make sure that M value is null. I could have put it in the initialization area, if you recall where it was, in the constructor. I could have put this one over here. I could actually say over here, I want M value to be null pointer. I could have done this, all right? Or I could have initialized it using the uh, universal initialization syntax. Okay, to initialize m value to null pointer. But over there is slightly more efficient, so I'm going to put it over there, not here. It's the same thing. Then I wanted to get the length, and I wanted to get to copy the string. I didn't want to include string header file. I wanted two functions to do string copy and string length for me. So I said I'm going to write it myself. So these are functions that are used as utility purposes. They don't belong to the name class. It's a general utility thing, right? So I don't have to instantiate it separate for each class. Therefore, they are static functions. They are functions who only one copy of them is going to get created, and it's a class function, which means I can use it with the scope resolution and name. It belongs to class. It's a shared. It's a class variable. It doesn't belong to the, to the object. It belongs to the design. Are we okay with this? That's why I made it static, because they, they don't build. When I say, for example, give me two seconds, print command. If I want to print a name, can I make print static? No, I can't, because each name has to print its own name. It belongs to object, not the class. But when I want to copy a string, I don't want to do anything to my property. Static, vari static functions cannot access the property because there are many properties and it's only one. They don't know which one you're talking about. So these are essentially like stand these are like functions that I want to write outside as if I wanted to write it before the class, right here, as a global function. I didn't want to because it was specifically written for name. So I put it in there. It's just an example of a static function to see what it is. Yes. OK. All right. Yes, you can pass it, but I cannot access M value in it. So, so with SDRLN, I cannot say, tell, tell what is the length of M value unless I pass it as an argument, like a regular thing. So my string length is simply doing this. So it says uh, character pointer n is equal to string. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a pointer called end, and I set it to the address of the beginning of the string. Then I'll keep going forward until I hit, hit the null. So now end is pointing to the end of the string. SDR is pointing to the beginning of the string. One pointer pointing to the end, one pointer pointing to the beginning. If I reduce end by string, I am reducing the address of end by the address of beginning. And because it's a character, the value that is coming in is the length, right? One is 9,000, the other one is 9,030. 9,030 minus 9,000, it's 30. Therefore, that's the length. And because plus plus happens anyway, 
it's not going to stop. What happens is that it is going to uh, be one more. That's why it's minus 1. And I am static casting it to an integer because I want an integer value to come out, not, not a pointer value. OK? So that's my string length. Now I want to find, uh, I want to do a string copy, and that's my string copy. So what I do, I say, start from the beginning of the destination and pointer, copy the first argument to the next argument, increase the pointers by one, copy. And each time it copies, it, if it's null, it's going to stop, right? Because anything but zero is true, correct? So it's going to pull, go to the end and stop. Mission accomplished. That's string copy. OK? So I didn't want to use the string copy. Many of this may have warnings in C++17. Go find out, OK? Because that's not a Boolean value. See if you can fix the warning. It might not compile on Linux. Because uh, Visual Studio is very forgiving. But these are good things to ha give you examples of tricky stuff to write. Allocate and copy. This one cannot be static because I want to allocate memory and copy the value. And because I wanted to repeat that thing over and over, I wrote a private function for it. It essentially checks the size of the string, adds one to it, allocates enough memory, and then it copies it. Which brings me to your problem. Why the heck you do SDRN copy after this? Why? Approximately 40%, 50% of you, after finding the length of the string, you do SDRN copy up to the length. Didn't you just measure the size? Didn't you exactly allocate enough memory for that size? Then why you are checking the length? That kind of put the label over here, I have no idea what a string is. You are in 345. Don't write redundant code. You're better than that. Write efficient code. Yes? Just because our former professor from old C++ class, it would be more safer to use this way in class. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have to pause. I have to pause. All right, so, so you measure what is the size, you allocate memory, and then you copy. All right? So when I'm actually doing, so when I'm actually writing this, I'm saying, OK, name, uh, the, the value may, might be null. If the value is not null, then allocate and copy the value. Allocate and copy does the allocate and copy, so I don't have to think about it anymore. OK? Solve the problem once, reuse it over and over. Don't think about it every second. It makes your brain dumb and tired, OK, if you think about the same thing over and over. When you solve the problem, use your solution, OK? And this is printing the trace. So first, it's going to pick up this one. Constant uh, character string goes over here, constant character string. Oh, sorry. Goes over here, constant character string, and prints it in yellow. Then it comes over here, returns the trace. So it becomes trace. And this, this is name. So it goes over here, passes the name, picks up this one, and prints it in cyan. So whatever the value of the thing is, it's going to be cyan. Whatever other thing is going to be yellow. OK? So that's my trace. My trace works kind of like C out. And because I was lazy to do double code backslash n, I defined that as a constant value over here, constant character pointer backslash n. And l means new line for me. It's end l, OK? OK? So that's that. So that, I did that. So that's the constructor. And now the copy constructor. In copy constructor, I'm going to say trace copying. And so I'm copying this, OK, uh, the value that is coming in. So it's going to buy. And I'm going to say assignment operator. Now I'm calling the assignment operator. Many of profs and every, many people do this. This is equal to n. Potatoes, potatoes. But I like to call the function. Why do I? Do like this when I have a function. The function name is operator equal. Just call the function. When you are outside, yes, I understand you overload the operator to make it look like an operator. But when you are inside the object, it's just a function. Call it the function. It's easy. Use the name of the operator if there's no shame in it. OK? So that one or this one, it's very fine. So I'm going to say copying by that one. And 
and then it goes to the assignment operator. And in assignment operator, I'm saying if the address of my, the address of this object is not equal to the, to the address of uh, the object that is coming in, full proof. Some people say A is equal to A. I just want to make sure that's not going to happen. Then I'm going to say trace, assigning me to that value go to new line. Then I'll delete the value, and I do allocate and copy. Now, it brings me to the next thing. Many of you have memory leak. It crashes when you delete stuff, right? And one solution that you find is this. It's like, like you see those birds that they hide their hats, head in the sand and they think nobody sees them, seeing them? That's what it means. You say, memory leak is better than crashing. Let me do memory leak. Who cares? So essentially, you are saying, because I'm deleting it, so why are you putting that delete over there anyway? You just set it to null. Why are you deleting it? That means, that means I have no idea what dynamic memory allocation is. OK? And I have seen people doing that. Please don't. If it crashes, fix the crash. Find out how it works. If you get 30% less mark because you are late, it's better not to un better than not understanding it. Understand it. Try to learn what's going on. So that's not the, that. If you are if you are deleting and while deleting it's crashing, two possibilities: you corrupted the memory by going too far in it. Or you did not do the you did not do allocation and there is garbage inside and you try to delete it. Walk through it. F10, F11 is made for you. It's walking through for you. So just hit it and you're gonna walk through it. Okay? Walk through it and then bring the mouse over it and see what went wrong. So please don't do that. You had those problems. I've seen it. So I'm asking you please not to do it. Um, Lots of people do this. Int len is set to str len of va m value, and then put the len here. Ah, uh, why? No, many people do that. Why? Well, you're afraid to put the function in there. You're just saying. Add, you're just allocating one, four bytes for nothing. You're just using four bytes, an integer for four bytes for nothing. Yes? One more time? Something is wrong. Fix the problem. That's why we uh, let's walk through it. I love to see that code. If something like that happens, bring it and we'll take a look at it and see what's going on. That if, see, um, it, remember this. When you have this, it means left and right are the same. If you put this one over here and doesn't crash and put this one over here and crashes, that means something's horribly wrong. You've got to fix it. It's like a red bulb coming up. And if something like that happens, and, uh, bring it and we'll, we'll work on it and we'll see what happens. I know many people did that, so afterwards they can do strn copy. They actually put the length over there, so later on they can say strn copy n value value comma n, len, and then they set the len to zero. I've seen people do that. So for that I understand, but since we don't need it, then please don't do it. Uh, so down to this point, we are, IP, we are OOP244. I thought nothing new, okay? And these are the parts that we are talking about new things. Move assignment and move constructors. What are they good for? I'm going to run the program for you. First, let me tell you what the code for it is. So essentially, when you put two ampersands for reference, you are telling What's coming in is a temporary object, if what's coming in is a temporary object, which means somebody came and asked a beautiful question, like gave me a very good metaphor for it, I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you exactly that. 
So you come with a coffee, a Tim Hortons coffee, a medium Tim Hortons coffee to me, and you say, you want one? And I'll say, yes. You go from Tim Hortons, buy an exact medium coffee, and you give it to me. You just call the copy constructor. OK? That's the coffee. It means after you gave me the coffee, you have a coffee to drink, I have a coffee to drink. OK? Now, I am coming to you with an empty, medium Tim Hortons coffee cup. And you have a coffee in your hand. And I'm going to say, give me your coffee. You pour your coffee in mine. You end up with an empty cup, and I have a full cup of coffee. Right now, a move constructor happened, which means the, cup, the, the object that I copied from became empty, went to a safe empty state. The same thing with assignment operator. When you assign one object to another, and it's a move assignment, the object that got assigned to will become empty afterwards. That's why they are not constants, as you see. You see that? They are not constants. So how the operation works? It's pretty straightforward. You don't have any dynamic memory allocation here. What you do, first you assume the memory of the thing that you are copying. So I'm saying names, m value, ends, m value, the one that I'm copying from, give me the address of it. I poured the coffee. Now my m value is pointing to the exact m value of yours. They are both pointing at the same place. Now we are at the state that it's going to crash if we just leave it like this. But then I'm going to say, now that I got yours, yours is nothing. I'm going to empty the target. That's moving. That's your home version, home of the thing that you have over here. That's, that's all you need to do. OK? And, and then you return this. And the copy, the move constructor, essentially does the same thing. But to guarantee that what is being done is move, we use the move operator that we use. Remember ref and move that we talked about? So you are essentially, because you are not sure that the compiler understands that that's a temporary thing, you are telling the compiler, hey, that's temporary. OK? Empty it. Now, that's all. So let's go through this and see what is the code and see how it works. Take a look. So I have name A set to Fred. I have name B set to A. This is copy constructor, correct? And I have C over there that is a default constructor. So I have A that was created with Fred in it. I have B that has Fred in it too because it got copied. And I have C. And if I print it, A, B, and C will be Fred, Fred, empty, correct? Then I'll come over here. I'm going to say move A to C. Now the move assignment is going to get called, not regular assignment, the one with 2 ampersands, because I just said move, which means no dynamic memory allocation is going to happen. It's going to just assume, take over the property of A and make A empty. After this, A will be empty, B will be Fred, C will be Fred. OK? That's when I manually move something to somewhere. But sometimes, look at get name over there. Get name is me getting an N, uh, a name, from the user. Now, the operator that I did, the operator overload for C in that I did is a sophisticated one. It has lots of dynamic memory allocation in it. I did it essentially like that, so you can walk through it, and it's kind of a good review. My C in over here gets any size, which means you can enter as long as information as you want or as short information as you want. It adjusts itself automatically to it. I'll show you the code in two seconds, but for now, let's not care about it. Now, N over here is actually getting read from the keyboard. So. It's receiving the value and put it in N, name. So name has enough value in it, has, I don't know, John in it. Then it returns it. Take a look at the return type of get name. What is the return type? Name by what? By what? By value. Thank you. 
And we learned in OB244, hopefully, that anything that is being returned by value is going to get copied. Therefore, before n is returned out, it's going to get copied into a nameless object. Then n is going to get thrown away. Now that nameless object is on line 133. At left side, I have name D. At right side, I have a nameless temporary object. Which constructor is going to get called? The move constructor automatically. Why? Because it's a temporary object. It's going to empty it. Why copy? When it's going to die anywhere, anyway, why do I do that? So that's going to happen. And then you're going to see. And in the other one, I, I manually am doing it. So let's walk through it and see how it's going to happen. Are we OK with this? Can I walk through it now? All right. So first, let's take a look at the execution and compare and see what happens So to, to see if, if that's exactly what happened over here. So these are the sequence of things happening. Oh. OK, so creating Fred, that's line 123. That's the one. Then copying Fred by assigning empty name to Fred. So what happens, if you remember in the, in the constructor, I called the assignment operator, right? Because it calls the assignment operator, and I initialize the, the member to null, it's an empty thing that is being assigned. So I'm saying copying Fred by assigning empty name to Fred. Then I'm creating an empty name at line 123, at line 20, 125. Now I'm printing at a Fred, B Fred, C empty name. That's exactly what we see, 126, 127, 128, right? Now I'm saying move C to A, so it's going to say move assignment, moving Fred into empty name, because at left one I had empty, right? And at right one I have, are we okay with this? <clears throat> So it does that, and then after this, actually, I think I have a bug right now. I just identified the bug. I think I made a boo-boo. We're going gonna, we're gonna to see. I, re I just remember what I wrote, and I think I have a bug in here I have to fix. We'll see. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I have memory leak, just FYI. All right? Anyways, it's going to move it over there empty. So A becomes empty. B is Fred. C is Fred. Then it's going to say creating an empty name, which is where? Oh, it's in get name. Get name, line 117. N got created. Get name was called. N got created. That's an empty name. And over here, I'm going to put far dude. OK? So now I'm going to hit enter and see what happens. So first, it says move constructor taking ownership of far dude by move assignment moving yada 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 then removing an empty name from memory what happened n just got copied into an empty thing and got passed out and then far dude thingy over here got printed oh that is this one okay now Next move happens over here, move constructor, again the same thing, but this is done manually. So what happens behind the scene automatically, I did it manually over here. Okay? And then E and V are the next, and then the destructors are, going to call the, are, are getting called in reverse order. Let me see if I have the leak that I thought that I have. So in my move assignment, see what I did? Can anybody tell me why I have memory leak over there? I have to delete? Yes. So I have to delete M underline value. I'm just setting it to something, right? I just overwrote my memory. How do I know in assignment operator I already don't have anything over there? Probably I did. So before doing this, I have to wipe out the old one. If I ran that with Valgrind, I would have gotten a big boo-boo over there. Actually, it's good that I made a mistake. So we can actually see. So now it's right. I'm saying first delete my thing, whatever it is. Now assume the uh, 
the value of the other one. Now, if mine is empty, oh, another thing, another thing, another thing, another thing. I have seen you do this. If is not equal to null pointer, delete has that mechanism inside automatically. You don't need to do that. Delete automatically won't do anything if it's not. So writing an if statement means, again, I don't understand how delete works. OK, yes? No, you, you're, you're wrong. If, if there is something that is there, then that is not null. Delete is going to happen anyway. Yeah. If it is null, there is nothing there. <laughs> We okay? If it's but if it, it it's not gonna prevent that, it doesn't know that it's not garbage, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's that. So I, I have to delete. Now we're gonna see if I actually made a boo boo over here or not, because I don't I don't know if it's actually not over here or not. So I'm gonna put a stop sign over here, and I wanna see if it's actually correct or not. Okay. And I know that my move assignment actually is called in my move constructor too. So I'm going to put it right over here. Now I can actually walk through it and see if it's OK or not. So I'm pressing F5, and I'm going to run it, compile it. Three years later, it comes over there. And uh, stick this to the right, and bring this one to the left. And let's take a look at it. Oh. OK. so. That's the trace. It's going to print, print it. There you go. So it's going to say moving. OK. Um, anyway, the message is too long. It doesn't matter. Now, what is my m value? It is null. Because it's null, no harm done. It's just going to bypass it perfectly. Now it's going to get that m value that is Fred and set that null thingy to that one. So that m value becomes Fred. And then it makes the other one null. So now it assumes the thing. All right? So what we have on the, on the notes has a bug. All right? Got to get fixed. That's nice, actually. I like it. One more time? Why do we set the end on The other one? Yeah. OK. Why do we do that? The reason is this. Why do we do that? The reason is. Un momento, por favor. The reason is I did that for OOP244, but it applies over here. If you don't do that and you copy everything, first of all, if, you, if it's, if, no, that's not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. So which one was it? Um, wait. That was the one. Anyways, let me draw it over here. So you are moving this to this one, right? So you are moving this one here, correct? So that's your data, correct? Now, if you want to move it, you have to make this point to that one, correct? If you don't set this one to null, they both are going to point to somewhere. When the destructor of this one is called, this is going to get destroyed. When the destructor of this one is going to call, program is going to crash. So those people who delete and their programs crash, it's very possible that's the case. It's already deleted. Give me line number always. Line 58, OK. So we, we, that we, delete. we delete, yeah. It's, it's not, no, actually 66, 66. 66, yeah. It means if it's null, yeah. doesn't have any memory, means it's null. Yeah. So if it's null, nothing's going to happen. If it's pointing to something, it's going to try and delete it. If the delete is successful, it's just successful. Otherwise, it's going to crash. Are we good? Are we good? That's the story of move constructor and 
move constructor uh, and move uh, and move uh, move assignment. That's what it is. That's essentially what it is, and what you're doing now. Now, I was telling that the thing that I have written is kind of a sophisticated one. It's not really sophisticated. It's just a nice read. And this is my read. So what I'm doing is this. First, I get a buffer size, depending on what you are. If you are getting names, what is a normal name size? 30? Well, you put 30 over there. You start with 30. So 90% of the time, no extra resizing will happen. OK? And now I think I set this one to 10 to just trigger it. So in here, I'm going to say buffer size 10. In my case, I put 10 over here. So it allocates 10 bytes of memory and holds the address of the beginning. I, I'm calling it read from. So there is a pointer pointing to the beginning of the memory that I just allocated. Right? Then I'm going to say number of buffers. Hold that. We'll, we'll see. This is actually number of allocations. I come over here. I'm going to say Boolean done. And I'm going to say done is true. So initially, I'm hoping that this is the only dynamic memory allocation that I have. I'm not going to do anything else. Then I'll come in. I'll call C in. And I'm going to say read from the beginning, where it's, you're supposed to read up to buffer size until you hit backslash n. If the, re the reading is done within the size of the buffer, reading is successful. And you don't need dynamic memory allocation. You had 10 bytes. You, had, you read 5. You are within your limits. Life is beautiful. You see and won't fail. It comes over here. Done is true. It allocates and copies, deletes the data, and you're done. OK? So that's the first scenario. Now you're actually writing Farad Solimanlu. It's bigger than 10 characters. So it reads the first 10, and get line doesn't hit the backslash in, but hits the buffer size limit. When it does that, it fails. C and says, I tried to read up to delimiter. I couldn't. I fail. I give up. So immediately, I, I'm coming in here. OK, you failed. It means memory wasn't enough. Add one to the number of buffers. Allocate new memory to the size of the buffers multiplied by the buffer size. So now it's 2, right? So if I had 10, now it, now it allocates 20 plus 1 for the null byte. OK? So now I'm allocating 20. Now that I'm allocating 20, I'm going to copy all the information that it just read and put it in temp. So the data is going to go into the temp. Now I'm going to say, I copied the old one, delete the old memory. The old memory is deleted. Assume the identity of the, of the new one and put it in old. So now data is going to point to? the new piece of memory. But I stopped halfway through, correct? I read 10 characters. I have to read the rest. They are still in the buffer. I didn't clear the buffer, right? So I'm going to say read from is data, address of data, plus the buffer size that I had and the number of buffers that are allocated. So essentially, the read from goes right to the end of where the data was ended. Now I'm going to say clear it. It means I'm telling to see in. See in, I took over it. Continue reading. See it goes back up, reads another buffer size, the amount that I added. Keeps going. If it ends, beautiful, it comes out, life, life is beautiful. If it's not, it adds another chunk and continues reading, reading, reading. So if somebody enters 500 lines, it's going to keep resizing and get everything and then read it. If they only put a small one, Therefore, any size. OK? That was a challenge for OP24 for last semester. I asked if anybody can remove. Because usually when we do this, you, instead of that, you put a string of 2,000 bytes. You read in that one, then you allocate that much, right? And if somebody goes 2001, your program crashes. This prevents that one. It's a good thing to walk through. <clears throat> Walkthroughs especially for dynamic memory allocation, can only be done using one of those four colored pens. 
Put everything on paper and you'll understand. What I just told you, if you understood, you're genius. Quit college, go make money. Go walk through that on a piece of paper and walk through it and then the light bulbs are going to go on, I guarantee. Are we good? All right. That was the walkthrough for that one and I'm going to pause it because we don't have anything.